Greetings, everyone, and great here for another Age of Ours 2 Definitive Edition replay. And we got a lot of chats there. But I have no idea what that was going on. Spawn the bottom right side as the orange Mayans. We have DS Beery. And spawn on the top left side as the blue Mongols. We have DS Darth Bar Barva. Let's cover each player's civilization bonuses. Mayans, Archer Civilization, start with plus one villager, but 50 less food, resources last 25, 15% lo longer, Archer's cost uh, less per age, 10, 20, 30, just assume zero and dark age, and we actually got uh, Eagle Scout and Villager Fans 4, picks off the loose uh, Scout right there, the Eagle Scout is down to one health, and I got two villagers here shanking a lion. The line does go down right there. We've got a number of these zebra dead, but they're not killed by the Eagle Scout. They were killed by villagers, and now we've got Orange's villagers engaging Blue's villager. This is a weird game already. Let's go and cover each player's civilization bonuses. Okay, got the Archer cost. Plumed Archer, which I remember correctly is a fast moving Archer. Unique text, Hull Tree, Javaliers, Skirmishers throw second projectile in El Dorado. Eagle Warriors have plus 40 hit points. And Tebow's walls cost 50% less, which is actually is very nice, especially if you want to use stone walls. His opponent? Mongols, a fan favorite. Cavalry Archer Civilization. Cavalry Archers fire 25% faster. Like Cavalry Hussars, Step Lances get plus 30% horn hit points. Hunters work 40% faster. Unique units of Magni, a advanced cavalry archer that does bonus damage versus siege. Unique tax nomads, whilst hosses do not decrease the headroom and drill. Siege workshops move 50% work, uh, work move 50% faster. Scout uh, team boats, scout cavalry light cavalry hussars get plus two line sight, making a better scouting tool. Now we got these villagers pushing way forward, trying to shake some villagers. Uh, Blue's trying to go for a palisade gate there to Wall's opponent. Now we got these guys shanking each other. Blue does cancel those walls there in order to get another villager there. These villagers are a bit wounded. Overall, Blue will win. We, we do have loom for Orange and for Blue. And Orange is villagers to see the damage there. The Mongol player does have a superior number of villagers at the moment. Probably because Orange had a number, large number of villagers not collecting resources. And it looks like Orange is going to be backing off the region. Probably a good idea. He does have a house here as well as... He could actually... What the hell? That sound effect sounds a little bit weird. What Orange could do is actually grab some of this food before coming on his way back. Since it does collect at a decent rate. I mean, you can either go to a location, start collecting the food, or collect the food and then go to a location. Same difference, but the light, those huntables will provide more food. By the way, it looks like we do have more traditional... Oh, we do actually have a bit of food being claimed up there. The zebra is being collected and does collect the full loot of food there before the zebra expires. Blue is now in feudal age. Orange is... Has to H on the way. Eagle Scout is in town center, getting some much needed health regen. Remember, you can do that. Very, very nice. Now, both players in Feudal Age. We do have now Scouts pushed away forward. Multiple Scouts, so this blue's eyeing for Scout production at the moment. We do got a Mana Arms research. He's going for a late uh, Mana Arms rush. You should see a militia already out on the field before those get pushed on out. But in this case, Case, not really. Spearman trying to poke down this house. He is inferior to a villager in one on one combat. Do you have some of these scouts now moving around? Trying to find engagement on some of these villagers. Do you got some farms now put on the field? Shot it. Man has pushed way forward. Does get inside this town center. Spearman receiving some hits there from these arrows. I got this villager. She's actually a wounded one and does not get killed off there. Scouts push away forward. We got four scout now pushing away forward as well. Remember, the Mongol scouts do spot farther.
do not got these forces pushing me forward, trying to hack apart some of these palisade walls. Got those are come over here to repair it on up. And Screamer's like, ah, I can poke a wall too. Nope, not repairing up the wall, going for a house. Scout's now trying I to hack to break into this uh gold line. Outside wall, now I've seen a bit of fire there. Got the town center arrows taking out that spearman. It uh, goes a couple of houses there in order to stop a spearman. Could finish them off if he so chooses for more housing space. And now I've got these man at arms and spearmen still trying to find more holes. And does go ahead and back off out of that out of that region. Scouts coming forward. We'll find a the Eagle Scout, which may have been actually full of good full health. Nope, that is a fresh Eagle Scout there. And now do got a watchtower being employed on now. Very nice. Scouts pushing way forward, trying to find a potential engagement. This area is walled off, so the wood line is protected. And a nice little circle, in fact, with that. Archer's trying to advance the forward, trying to throw some arrows into this wood line. He does have fletching research. And we'll find some arrows onto some of these villagers. Of course, the damage on puts quite minimal versus the villagers. They do have two pierce armor, while the archers do have three damage, so it's three damage per arrow. Or five damage, three damage per arrow. Also seeing a bit of fire there. Over here, do not have, looks like some, I think that was an uh, archer being picked off by the men-at-arms. Do not have a watchtower being pulled on out. Trying to go for another house there to protect his wood line. He's still some hits over there. Got these archers currently idle doing nothing. It does go ahead and back off out of the region. Now the tower is built. And this archer and eagle scout is advancing forward. Now let's get some good damage there. Eagle scout is a bit more resilient. They have two inherent pierce armor. Now I've got these mana arms trying to slash apart this stable there. Overall, oh, we've got these uh, villagers advancing forward. I'm not sure what he's eyeing. I search off the blue for the time being. Archers, more villagers. I'm not sure. Oh, he's eyeing for a tower rush over here. Or tower assault, because it's really a rush at this point in time. Man arms being pushed on back. We've got these archers engaging. The man arms only have one inherent pierce armor. Now this watchtower is being deployed on out. Now the watchtower is built, gaining some arrows onto these forces. With fletching, he does have one additional range. And these towers are out of range of each other. Finds another angle there with this another tower there, so it's away from this tower. But with his own fletching research, he may be able to hit them in return, which could be very useful because if you throw some additional forces in the inside of this tower. The bonus arrows do bonus damage versus other towers. And there we go. He can throw his archers on the inside as well. And now got this tower easy to deal with the other tower. The villagers still in the region. They can push forward to pull out some more towers. We got this tower in this region. He could pass the boy a little farther back, like he did with this tower here. And Orange is going for his castaway. He does not have Bodkin Arrow. Well, doesn't have fletching research, nor will he get Bodkin Arrow anytime soon. These villagers seem a bit too much fire. He needs to put a tower right next to the tower, and also he can hit the other tower. And now we got the Eagle Warrior research being plotted. It looks like the orange players just eyeing for straight Eagle Warriors. 
the Mongol player right now has no Castle H on the build queue. He's saving us the resources. There we go. Castle H on the build queue now. So pretty far away. Going for another tower. It does get out of range. So the fletching has been very important there. Don't see fletching being researched. He does have a blacksmith. Go for chain mail armor. And now they've got the eagle warriors now put on the field. Uh, looks like the watchtower has been gunned down. He does not have fletching just yet. This tower may be in range of both these towers. And it's right now firing arrows on this house. Oh, I, uh, okay. See some palisade walls on the build queue there by orange. And now we've got these orange eagle warriors advancing forward. Trying to find engagement with this entire area is walled up. Though we do have a stone wall going up, but the village on the wrong side of it. And build up now. Blue does have a superior number of villagers. That's because he has a later castle age. Does take out that one villager there. And now Eagle War is trying to make some breaches. Maybe villagers inside this tower. I'm not sure where Blue's villagers actually even went. Oh, yep, yeah, there's those villagers. Of course, these towers can range each other. This one may have... Yep, does have the archers on the inside. Gets good damage there. These Eagle Wars have five pierce armor, so they can withstand quite a bit of abuse. The primary arrow of the watchtowers is six, so each arrow will do one damage. And nothing more. And now I've got Blue's uh, Castle H. He's going for his own mana arms. He's eyeing for... Wait, Mongo player going for mana arms? What world is this? Oh, I think I know why. He sees one's going for Eagle Warriors, and Men at Arms are to counter to Eagle Warriors. They do have a soft uh, extra couple of damage for Eagle Warriors. And just generally more status engaged Eagle Warriors as well. So we've got Eagle Warrior transition. Over here, we do have these Eagle Warriors trying to stab some of these walls down. Gold is being claimed here, so blue we need eye to put, secure more gold. He does have a gold deposit over here and over here. And now we've got a good number of mana arms, and we have a relatively rare upgrade. Long swordsman now blow it out in the field. Archers engaging. They will get overran. Over here got these scouts pushed way forward. We don't see the light cavalry research there. But we'll find the gold stone mine there. And down south, we just got a big wave of archers. Could go for our crossbows and bottle can arrow. They got some of these eagle warriors. And now we got the light cavalry being researched there. Once you get that light cavalry up, you will get additional health. Eagle Warriors running around, long sword, or yeah, long swordsman advancing on forward. I'm not used to saying that word, long swordsman. That's what they spearmen there. Archers, crossbows have been deployed on out. No Bodkin arrow, no Bodkin arrow on the research view. And now I do have this towns that are going up, which will can force these forces back. He doesn't have any pierce armor research for his archers. He does have armor research for his uh, long swordsman. That's a long time. We'll spot these Eagle Scouts there. We'll be picked off one at a time, but we'll get some good damage there. Likely pick one of them off before going down. Eagle War is advancing on forward. I don't see Long Swords here for defense. Bottom Arrow now in the research queue, and now we do have also the Cavalry Archers being pulled them out. Cavalry Archers have been pulled on the field, they do have 6 range. The Warriors, of course, have their standard range of melee. The scouts now moving around, there is an opening in this region. Orange is trying to get, build in those towns up here to collect up that gold. Orange does have a slight villager count advantage as well. And now we do have a university being pulled off the multiplayer, not getting out in another town just yet. 
And these villagers will be spotted there. The light cavalry will get some great damage onto them. We currently have an increase of 78 health. It does pick off more villagers there. Very nice. Now put Orange back to equal to the Mongol player. You still have access to, of course, additional town centers. Igor's Advanced War trying to get some more damage here. Do you still have this university going on up? Town center has gone up. Of course, he's starting to siege down his bonus town center with his crossbows. Cavalry archers push away forward. We're seeing a bit of fire there with this tower nearby. Shot. He does not have bullet six yet. And these crossbows could be back in the corner. Light cavalry getting picked on off by these eagle warriors. He does have a good number of uh, long swords here for protection. You got a game there, it's a good engagement there for blue overall, I'll say. And now you got a defensive keep castle being flooded now. Cavalry archers trying to hunt down this force. He has a massive number of cavalry archers. He has 15 there. Trying to hit this uh villager trying to build this cat uh keep or castle. And some of these uh villagers trying to go in down just got those like cavalry there. And the castle still pretty far from being completed. Got more Eagle Warriors in the build queue. Orange has no villagers in the build queue. Now, now he does have one. Let's get some arrows there. It does get out of range now. He has the knight that castle being built. And the one swimming to finish off that right there. And now Blue's going to be eyeing for a counterattack or more attack with these cavalry archers. And there's a very, very large number there. Blue's uh, villagers advance forward like nine to deploy keep some or castle somewhere. Or just additional town centers that never hurt. Oh, what just happened there? Sorry, I missed that. That looked like it was a Magano shot from somewhere. That did not look like it's going to die anytime soon. He must not have been paying, paying attention there. Does find a volley of arrows there. Does roll some misses. More Eagle Scouts or Eagle Warriors advance forward. They're being picked off one at a time. There is a breach over there. He didn't realize it was a breach since uh, camera angles and all that sort. Does take off the spearmen as well. Now he can start hitting these villagers. Blue does have the spear number of villagers. Orange wasn't building villagers all too well for a time frame. And now he's going to be focused down this uh, tower there. Takes out the Eagle Scout or Eagle Warrior while at it. It was blocked in there. Wait, how many Eagle Wars are inside these uh, garrisons? We got three at the moment. Now he's got a bit of an ambush there. These guys need a general attack move. They will get focused down there. And needs a bit more than just that. And now those Eagle Scouts do go down, Eagle Warriors. Now with the minimum range there. Our Archers gains good damage there on that tower. It does take a hat, so have a bit of time and health there. Orange designed to get out more of these Eagle Warriors. Could go for a Maganel, could go for a... Oh, less villagers. Try to wall these guys in. Does briefly wall them in. And finish off all of those villagers there. I think we may have Ballistics Research for Aura Blue. Yes, we do. He does have this uh, castle now built on the field. I think he's going for some plumed archers. I don't know if those just... Oh, there is a plumed archer in there with a couple villagers. We've got another keep over... Or castle over here to help secure up this region. And the cavalry archers will find it relatively soon. It does only have one pierce on the moment, so they will sustain quite a bit of damage from those uh, castles. Now got the cavalry archers patrolling around trying to find a opening to exploit. Assuming about exploit, he does go ahead and take out those Eagles. Not exploit. 
I think the term exploit in that case, like, oh, there's a couple guys you can kill, you can exploit your weakness, that sort of thing. Not an exploit, exploit. Most of the stone has been collected now. I don't see any more stone in this territory. He has to go up north to collect some. He has a very healthy number of cavalry archers here. He has so 25. They're all quite wounded, however. Do you hear some relics being claimed? I think Blue's going for these relics. Now it's going to break down that house. They have a home wrecker right there. And now we've got these evil warriors advancing on forward, trying to engage. He's going directly over here. We've got more villagers pushing forward and maybe for another castle somewhere. And to your age, on the build queue, there's a castle on the high ground. The evil warriors will spot this. Let's get some slices there, but should we protect it? These evil warriors will find these stone miners. Now that Eagle Wars is starting to go down, got this monk with, already claimed the relic, does claim the relic there. Goes out of gate there, trying to stall his opponent. Oh, and there we go, got uh, these Eagle Wars, does get the nice little surround there, but he does back himself the corner. That's why he built that wall there. He found a choke point to fight from, and these Eagle Wars got annihilated. Excellent play there by the Mongol. Minimized damage took there. The Mongol player still superior number of villagers. You know, some of them are not as I can click at the moment. They're trying to build out this forward castle, which of course allow them to produce out Megadai. And none of this uh, unique text are important in this case, so Megadai is all he really needs from it. Later on, as he gets his uh, Pila Age up and going, he trebuchets would be decent though. No Imperial Age for Orange just yet. So the Mongol player would have a great tech advantage. In fact, he has a good resource res reserve as well. And there's Imperial Age for Blue. Castle will go up there. He may just want to pull out a lumber yard over here, as well as perhaps get out some other infrastructure. But now these uh, Eagle Warriors will find an opportunity to slice up some of these villagers. But Blue's still in a great position, and Orange just backs out of the game. This is Anna Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.